YouTube family, Lisa A. Romano here, and um, I want to discuss a few things about how we, the wounded, who are coming through spiritual transformations, and those of us who come from less than perfect homes, as adults, how can we transcend all the, the chaos and all the dysfunctional programming that we have going on in our head? And how can we, once we master the programs in our head and create new programs, learning to love the self, how do we then find our purpose? Lots of times people ask me in one-on-one -on -one coaching classes or my teleclasses, my workshops is, I've had so much pain in my life. Can I ever truly recover? And deeper, how can I ever hope to find purpose? And make sense out of all this pain and it's a very complex question to answer but I think the answer is a lot simpler than we want to believe it is and so I will give you my best attempt at explaining it and um, the explanations will be in one of my upcoming mp3s that will be available in length on my website that you can download okay so um, one of the problems that we have is that we attach to pain. And what pain does is it grounds us. So what do I mean by that? So when I'm thinking about the pain that happened to me when I was a little girl, that pain pulls me back into my past and I'm stuck. Even though I have the ability to move forward and create in my life, the pain that I'm recreating through my ability to imagine is keeping me stuck. So pain is something, pain you can think of as bricks, bricks in my pocket, okay? One of the strategies that I teach in my, in my teleclasses and workshops is this, the sweater strategy where we, we decide to take the sweater of shame off and hand it back to the people who gave it to us and the pain and all the situations and all the wounds that we have are like bricks in those pockets in, in, of that sweater. And we just said, there you go, <laughs> right back at you, dude. I don't want this sweater no more. It's, it's a lovely exercise. So understand that pain, I want you to correlate with bricks, okay, so that you can metaphorically understand that pain keeps us grounded. Now, when we are grounded in pain, when we are grounded, it's very difficult for our brains to think outside our skull. The brain associates so much pain with what's happening in the experience and also how we're rewinding the tape. Oh, this happened when I was three, and this happened when I was seven, and this happened when I was 25. And so we're stuck. We're stuck in our skulls, and it's we're doing it because we're on this treadmill, and we're watching the same movie over and over and over. But, and our body is divinely reacting to that movie over and over and over. So we are energetically keeping ourselves stuck. Okay, now... What we have to understand is that the pain prevents us from seeing outside the box. The box is literally your skull, D1. It's your skull. Now, when you are able to detach from the pain, which means accept that it's there. It's there. The pain's there. Nothing you can do about it right now. You've been wounded, and it is what it is. It's sort of like a scar. It is what it is. Um, when you're able to mentally understand and cognitively get to a place in your intellect that you can understand, oh, mm, mm, I, can, I can think about that pain and detach from it and think outside my skull and fly to a higher perception of myself, right, outside of myself, outside of my dysfunctional marriage, outside of my addiction, outside of my family, keep going, dear ones, outside of my state, keep going. Outside of my country, outside of my world, I can, I, can, I can imagine my existence from Jupiter. I can go outside my solar system and imagine my existence from that perspective and who I am and where, does my, where do I fit in into this whole scope. I know it's so deep, but hang in there. So... What's helped me on my road to enlightenment is to begin expanding my perception of self. When I continue to only see myself as this pain body, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. When I got to a point of, of understanding and conscious where I understood, oh, wait a minute, I am a spirit first that has a brain 
that's been corrupted by dysfunctional programming. So my agenda as a spirit is to figure out how to use this brain in this physical world. Hang in there, dear ones. This is where it starts to get a little funky. So the way, the way I see things is this. I do believe that we are all stardust. If you were to look at yourself on a slide and you were to, you were to chop yourself up and get to, to your basic core, you would be an atom, an A-T-O-M. And isn't it funny that the basic man is called A-D-A-M in the Bible? Coincidence? I don't think so. I don't think so. But an atom, an A-T-O-M, represents, if you look at it, it looks like the universe. Expand it. So if you were to look at the universe, you would see, see all this stuff floating around and, and our solar system, you'd see the sun, it was the center of our solar system, and that's very much what our cells look like or our, an atom looks like. So that's really interesting. So man really is consciousness or the universe projecting. So really difficult sometimes for some people to grab a hold of that, but just hang in there. So let's just say, let's just say that before we entered this time-space reality called Earth, we as spirits, as beings, had an opportunity to come to the planet. Now, one would ask, why would I want to do that? Well, on Earth, you get to be whatever you want to be. You get to come in this fleshy robe full of hair, because your body's covered in hair. The Bible says that too. Um, you get to come to this time-space reality, reality, this linear place, to play. You get to be a dancer, an artist, a musician, a singer, whatever you want to be. A tow truck driver, a garbage man, a letter carrier. You get to be a mom or a dad or an aunt or whatever you want to be, you can be. So from the perspective of why would a spirit choose to come to this time and space? Well, because... The, at the end of the day, a spirit would want to manifest in a physical uh, uniform such as this, this body, because here we get to create. Here we get to, to know what it feels like to be God. As a man, God gets to, re gets to create his own vision for his life in a time-space reality. So then people will, will ask me, well, why is it that we come here and we endure so much pain. This is my opinion. We are spirits that wish to come to a time-space reality. Now, in order to play in this playground called Earth, you have to become an Earthling. You have to become a, a belonger to the Earth, which means you need to operate on some schematic or on some program that is conducive to a time and space linear reality. You need a brain to do that. So your spirit's got to come in and pick up a brain before it can go about its merry way in, in this land. of this. And the, our reality really is like a virtual reality, in my opinion, because we are constantly projecting what's going on in here, out there. Not a whole lot of us want to take accountability for the garbage that we produce in our lives. And I can understand why. I was one of those people that said, no, me. It's not, I'm not the reason my life is so screwed up. It's his fault. He's a narcissist. <laughs> Until I came through the veil of consciousness, unconsciousness, or whatever, and realized that, wait a minute, I am projecting. It could be no other way. So, in order to play in this world called on this planet, because it's a 3D reality, you need a brain. Now, a brain is sort of like the hardware or the computer system that allows you to use your fingers, to use your eyes, because all the fingers and eyes and a beating heart are all necessary to play in a certain way in this time and space reality. You need flesh, you need bones, you need a nervous system, you need a beating heart, you need a mind. You need, you need to be, you need a liver, you need to be kidneys. You've got to process information through this data bank because you need a data bank, bank that is physical that can relate to this physical material world. Without the, the computer, the brain, you can't, you can't play here, okay? That's just part of what you have to do. So now you're a spirit. Now consider your earthly parents, your passports, meaning like, you don't get to pass 
into this time and space as a spirit until you pick up a brain and the only way you're going to get a brain is through other earthlings. It's sort of like a rite of passage. You want to play here? You know what? You, you have to get a brain from these people who just might be dysfunctional, you know, and you're going to have to overcome some stuff to realize that within you, you are a spirit. You're going to have to face certain challenges and die to the old and be born again in the new, which is really not new. It's your true nature. So when you come through the veil of consciousness and you, you go through all these trials, you know, sort of like, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the game Zelda. I'm giving my age away here. My son and I used to play this great Nintendo game called Zelda. And I often think of a, a spiritual experience as, um, as, as almost like what Zelda had to go through. You know, Zelda, you know, had to, had to you know, fight and, and um, conquer certain, certain obstacles in order to gain life forces and in order to gain, you know, the Holy Grail, if you will. And I think that when we come in here as spirits, we're going to be challenged. And those of us who are especially challenged, in my opinion, we are the ones who, at the end, at the end of our journey, end up enjoying it the most. Because it's sort of like the, you know, there's really no much, there's not much fun in climbing a three-foot hill. Not much fun in that. Climb Mount Everest, there's, there's this sense of pride and joy and, ex and exuberance that you're actually able to climb this mountain and get to the top. So it was the journey that got you there, but it was the perse perseverance, the determination, and the practice, and the desire, and the drive, and the commitment that got you to that point on the top of Mount Andrew Everest where you could look around and say, this is it. I have overcome. And so that's sort of like the hero's journey, if you will. The darker the valleys that you have to walk through, then the greater you enjoy, the more you're able to enjoy the light. So people ask me, how do I find my purpose? Well, the way we find our purpose is we have to embark on a healing journey. And we have to get to a point in our lives where we realize, we realize that we were always enough. And that perhaps, you know, coming through, the, coming through, becoming an earthling, we had to pick up a brain on a way in, you know, and depending on our demographic, depending on the, um, the intellect of our parents or, you know, everything is dependent on how our parents, what they programmed into us. So depending on what was influenced or inputted into this data bank will affect the way we proceed through life. Now, Let's say you're at a point in your life where you've, you're, you're done struggling. Like, that's it. Your life sucks. You're not blaming anybody anymore. You know that everything that is you created, either deliberately or by default. In most cases, we create by default. And let's say you humbly acknowledge that. Remember, only the meek and the humble shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within you all the time. When you wake up and you realize your divine nature, and you realize that your spirit and you are God incarnate, when you realize, you create heaven on earth, then the world becomes a playground. Earth is like so much fun because you're like, I want to be Beyonce. And your mother's going, you can't be Beyonce. And you're going, later, I'm going to try to be Beyonce. And you just, you take dance lessons. You do whatever you got to do to become as, as close to Beyonce as you want. This is your reality. You know, um, I know that's kind of silly, but when you get to a point where you realize that your earthly parents were your passports. You had to pass through their ports, if you will, and pick up a brain on the way in. You know, that's the only, it's sort of like your visa or literally your passport. You need a passport. Your passport's the brain. You want to play here on earth? You want to be a creator? You want to learn what it is to deliberately manifest? You need a brain. Now, the problem is, dear ones, the problem is, dear ones, when you came here, you agreed to allow yourself to be unconscious because you're not a deliberate creator if you come here knowing you're a spirit, okay? There's, there's nothing to conquer if you come in knowing you're a spirit. You come in, spirit, fall asleep to the fact that you're a spirit. You go through trials and tribulations. Your, your brain is, is full of junk mail. Your brain is full of viruses. You know, um, your brain's a mess. You're hurting yourself. You, you're addicted. You're having affairs. You know, you, you're throwing yourself at narcissistic men. You're having ch having children, you don't know who the daddy is, you know, and you're beating your kids, whatever, and you wake up and you realize, oh, all of that, 
All of that, all of that stuff was a symptom of my unaware mind, was a symptom of what I experienced in childhood, all of it. And below all of it, there I am. There I am. I was always enough. I was always enough. When you get to that point, life starts to get really, really messy because it's painful. When you start to realize, like, oh, my God, what did I do to my kids? Oh, my God, what, what, did, I do? what did I do to her? What did I do to him? Oh, my God. It's a very important place. You have, you have to feel that because that's where um, true humility comes. I am sorry. We learn to say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We learn to be self-accountable. So that's very, very necessary. So don't rush that process if that's where you at, you're at. It'll pass. Just acknowledge it. After the healing's done and you, and you um, start to put into play your new awarenesses and now you're inputting new data because you need a new, new uh, set of skills and you need new information to be put into your brain that's been deprogrammed. It's not enough to deprogram a computer. You have to input it with new data. So now that you're on that road, which is at the... This is why books like mine, and I'm not just plugging myself, I really want you guys to understand, if you follow my books in, in the order they were written, which is this one, The Road Back to Me, then My Road Beyond a Codependent Divorce, um, Loving the Self-Affirmations, I don't have a copy of that book at, at my house, but Quantum Tools to Help You Heal Your Life Now. Um, other books out there, The Human Magnet Syndrome by Ross Rosenberg. I love Honoring the Self. Nathaniel Brandon is one of my most favorite, favorite Love him. Hope he's doing well. I heard he was very ill. But um, he is one of my favorite, favorite authors of all time. If you haven't read his stuff, get on it. So at that point, books like mine, books like Nathaniel Brandon's, Ross Rosenberg, Melody Beattie, um, let me see, The Power of Now, uh, all these types of books, that's, that's now you're reprogramming. Very, very important, very crucial time. Now you're taking control over your program. Awesome. Great. Now, with all this new data, you get to begin building a new framework, okay? You end up realizing, I was always the creator of my reality. I was always the creator of my reality. And now the self gets to become self-actualized. At that point, we're able to say to people, get out of my way. I love you, but I'm done with you. You know, I love you in love and light, dear one. You got to get out of my way. And uh, if you get in my way, I'm just going to go around you, and I'm going to be who I am. On my road, what happened to me was um, I had to split from my family, and it was extremely painful. It was extremely, extremely painful because they didn't understand me, and they didn't get me. And I was trying to help them so much, but I just, I just kept getting kicked in the head. Um, they sided with my ex-husband during the divorce. They called me selfish for wanting to get a divorce. They totally misunderstood me, and I felt so crushed by that. Um, but I realized that part of what I had to, do, had to do was to stop the bleeding. And for me, stopping the bleeding meant shutting out the negative voices that were trying to pull me down. So that's one of the things that you would need to do to help you find your purpose. Because when you shut out the negative voices, like the outside voice, voices and forces that are trying to pull you down, which includes ridiculous music on the radio, which includes ridiculous news stories, which includes all that garbage you see at the newsstands, all reality TV, all that stuff is nonsense. It's reeked with codependency. It's reeked with seek me, seek outside validation, seek outside validation. Just reinforcing everything you're trying to debunk. So you want to stop the bleeding and stop those outside forces from coming in because you're trying to reprogram your brain. Um, finding your purpose is so much easier when you quiet the mind and you stop these negative voices from coming inside, and you begin to tune into self. So tuning into self means I begin to ask myself, Lisa, what is it that brings you the most joy? Then act on it. Lisa, what would you like to experience within the next five years? What would you like to do? What kinds of things do you like to do in your free time? How do you want to feel every day? What's your favorite color? What kind of clothes do you want to wear? What color hair do you want to have? Where do you want to go on vacation? What kind of relationships would you like to manifest? How much money would you like to create? How do you want to live each and every day? How do you feel in your body? What's the ideal weight for you? What do you want to think about every day? Like what would make you feel 
good to think about? What makes you feel good when you think about it? You can't tune into self and find your individual life purpose unless you quiet the mind and hold other people at bay for a while. And, to, and then, then, then you're able to find and ground yourself. So I believe everybody's purpose is to come here and wake up to the divine nature. I understand that I am a spirit that came here wanting to play in this time-space reality with a purpose. And I believe my purpose is to shed love and light and to help people wake up and realize it's not you, it's your programming. And to say it in a way that people can actually hear it, to present myself as real as possible so that I can connect with as many people as possible and help them feel not so badly about some of the choices that they made and help them be able to understand that that so much of what they do and say and feel is a result of childhood programming, which is not their fault, so that they can learn to forgive themselves, quiet down their own spirit, and then learn to love themselves and then act upon that love and bring more in love and light into this world. I believe that I, I, I was born with that intent, okay? But I also knew that in order for me to figure all this stuff out, I was going to have to suffer pretty, pretty deeply in order to be able to conquer these wounds and to master my mind. So I picked up a brain from mom and dad and it was influenced by lots of ACOA stuff, thank you, and denial, thank you, whatever, bless it. And as a result of living below the veil of consciousness, I made a big mess of myself and nearly died because I was such a mess. Okay, thank you, bless it. But through it all and because of it all, I was forced to dig deep within myself and find love and hope within me, even though there was nothing going on outside of me. I had to believe in myself and I had to believe that I was born for a reason. And I always did, but I clung to that now. Now I understand that it was always my journey and part of my purpose, if not my purpose, to master the brain. My spirit was always enough, but I had to come here and master the brain. I had to master the chaos. I had to control that which was going on in my mind and master it so that I could tune back into self and then manifest self and come to a point where I understood that I was always enough and that the world really is my playground. The world really is my playground and my intent creates my reality. Every door I open, I have to take accountability for because behind that door, door is the projection of my intent. So that's why I teach all of you and teach my clients privately and openly that you must know what you think and you must know what you feel and you must know what your intent is because your intent is creating your reality. Um, when you want to control someone or get them to see your point of view, your intent is to control the other person's perception of you. And what will show up is you will feel controlled by their perception of you. That is your intent being projected. When you love yourself and you forgive yourself, others will forgive you. That is your intent being projected upon you. When you are unforgiving, when you are critical of yourself, you will feel criticized by others and you will criticize others. That's your intent. If your intent is to criticize and to demean, expect to be criticized and demeaned because you're creating your reality as you go. My idea is that it's every single human being or earthling's agenda or purpose to wake up to that reality. That's your purpose. Because when you wake up to that reality, you add love and light. You, have, you, you literally transform your life and you become born anew. That is what it means to be born again. When you are born to your divine nature, that is what the Bible speaks about, being born again. When the Bible says, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, what I believe is trying to be set across is, know that you are the Son of God and the daughter of God, and know that when you are born again, you, that represents Jesus Christ being born again, your Savior. 
when it says you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before you can be born again, absolutely, you have to know that you are your own Savior. You have to know that you have the ability to save yourself. You have to know that within you is the seed of a God, or the God, the seed of God. And that when you accept that, you become born in that reality, or born again. You see, the whole world works like a boomerang. The, per, your purpose is to become born again and to remember who you were before you entered this time-space reality. Then you are literally an angel or a spirit in a body anew. You get a new body. Every cell in your body transforms. It turns into light. The pain is gone. The suffering is gone. You know, your mother doesn't like you today. That's okay. Aunt, Aunt Jane is calling you fat. Hey, no problem. Uncle Harry thinks you're a bitch. No problem. It doesn't matter anymore. Literally, literally, things just don't bother you anymore. So, dear ones, I really hope that this is, this. it's almost a half hour video today. I really, really hope that these, this video has inspired you and um, helped you to understand the true, your true nature and um, what, your, what your true purpose here on earth is, and that is to awaken to the true reality and the true nature of you, which is God incarnate. You're a spirit, and your job is to learn how to navigate the brain. Okay, and that's not easy, but once you do, once you learn how to master this, this brain, which is a material thing that you need in order to exist in this material world, okay? Maybe there are spirits here, but you can't see them because they don't got a brain, okay? You need a brain and a body and some nerve endings to play in this playground called Earth because it's a linear place. So you need a linear apparatus, which is the brain. Your spirit needs a brain. Your spirit needs skin. You know, your spirit needs ears and, you know, whatever. You, you need, you need, you need um, concrete stuff, if you will. You need material stuff to exist in a material world. So the spirit needs this material stuff to be able to walk around and exist in a material world. So you literally are a spirit, dear one. You're not your face. That's just the body, the suit that got you here. That's it. That's it. So I'm hoping that I've helped you understand that um, your job is to master the brain. Just master the brain. Hope this helps, dear one. Namaste. Bye.